Good evening, fellow souls. This is your President Sebastian, and I am on this broadcast to invite you to a never-before occasion in the history of souls. It's blessing the best, honor the ultimate, pride unparalleled to have been born as sons and daughters of Mother Earth. But none of us realized the greatness of rarest opportunity called human life until we graduated as souls. We all had been a part of mankind that was unkind, humanity that shunned sanity, and we left behind complexities that degenerated the world to the point of no return. We have an obligation to bail out the mankind from the alarming adversities and guide the humanity to embrace unity and peace. Hence, the Parliament of Souls has decided to send a group of imminent souls back to Earth to accomplish this mission. The souls who aspire to be a part of this mission are requested to appear for an interview before the Human Mission Selection Committee tomorrow at the Souls headquarters. I wish you all success. Good morning, fellow souls. I am Shakila. Secretary Human Mission Selection Committee and I welcome you to this interview process. You will be appearing before a panel and the panelists are Samrat Ashoka, the emperor of the Maurya dynasty who was ruling almost the entire Indian subcontinent. Confucius, the great Chinese philosopher who said that life is really very simple but we are bent upon complicating it. Lima, the first granddaughter of Adam and Eve who epitomized progressive women of later generations even in that primitive era. And the Greek poet Homer, who wrote epics such as Iliad and Odyssey. And I welcome you and wish you all success. You can go in, Harry Truman. So, how do we address you? Mr. President? Or Mr. Reign of Ruin? Soul Homer, the reign of ruin was just a threat to end the World War II, and it never had any lethal intention. Harry, Harry Truman, you've been credited as being one of the most popular presidents of the United States. In your view, which aspect of your presidency had contributed to this honor? Perhaps the way I handled the role of the United States during the World War II. Didn't you realize that you were setting a bad president when you ordered a nuclear attack on Hiroshima and Nagasaki? I had no choice then, as a steward of the American people and the chief executive of the United States. The World Wars too are in a way bad presidents that way. I'm afraid we can give you only negative points for this answer, Mr. President. Hmm. You were part of a global confrontation called World War. And surely you realize now that wars are nothing but institutional arrogance, organized terrorism that were pitted against the foundations of mankind. What do you suggest we do to bail mankind out of this war evil in your view? Humanity should reorient and reinvent itself. Only a true global leadership of rare human instance can make it happen. Thank you, Sol Truman. We will get back to you. Thank you all so much. Your turn, Cleopatra. Sol Cleopatra, a star immortal, beauty beyond poetic portrayal, princess of the Pharaoh dynasty. Why had there been so much turbulence, private and public life? You had to kill yourself eventually. I really don't know what it takes to be a star, but to be a reigning queen, the toll was inevitable. My life perhaps could have been better, but for my obsession for power and extravagant lifestyle. Beauty breeds problems and the addition of greed seems to have made it worse for you. No wonder your life was quite eventful and challenging too. Living the goddess image Battling emotional tribulations, surviving the power games were the never-ending challenges all my life. 
what's your opinion on human leadership the eccentric and ineffective leaders were the problem then but the problem now lies with fanatic perverted religious and political leadership hmm. the transition from monarchy to socialism is a dream change which provides space for everyone but the missing elements are equality in its true sense and the social mechanism that can sync liberty with responsibility hmm. you ended your life for whatever the reason why do you warp for human innings yet again i want to feel the spirit of democracy live the life of liberty and i aspire to be a social crusader why a crusader why not a politician or a star i was tired of being a celebrity i now want to experience life as a commoner i think life is really not worth living unless one can walk freely on the road one can play a commendable constructive role even as a commoner individuals hold the key for change what do you want to accomplish as a crusader when one woman walks bare on the road you call it obscene but when 1000 women do the same you call it culture so culture which is conditioning of the mind views the same human life from different perspectives many a time the cultural dictums eclipse the individual's rights and liberty there is a definite need for cultural reorientation through a convergence of different cultures which can provide solutions to many of the human problems you've got both beauty and brains and we greatly appreciate your conviction for a constructive change we shall get back to you thank you very much thank you all bin laden go in you're a surprise applicant bin laden why not you see bin laden a belief is an extension of the imagination and when that tends to go overboard it breeds extreme eccentric radical tendencies which i suppose drove you to target innocent lives including women and children we are disheartened that you left behind a deadly legacy i had revolted against the western oppression the human mind is more faithful than a dog it never finds its master wrong adolf nazi fascist mussolini and all those who adulterated power with terror too never found themselves wrong as they had their own excuses as justifications to bleed the pages of history so we're not surprised with your reaction does anybody ever realize the suffering of our brethren the discrimination and injustice on any section of society in any part of the world is condemnable but why all this hatred when the fact remains that humanity is the mother of all the religions and we are all brethren of the same origin i had acted as directed by my conscience that's all see bin laden there was no religion in our times we were almost like weaker animals living in groups we fostered unity and not the divide the emergence of civilization seems to have short circuited the civilized minds allowing notional tantrums traumatizing the rationalized realities of human life why this man made catastrophe goes on unabated and can't we just put an end to it the lopsided west oppressed killed and harmed our brethren and i was a strong proponent of the sharia law and yet you hid yourself and your loved ones in safe havens why did you not realize that life is precious to everyone the civilians from enemy countries including women and children can be the legitimate targets to kill and that was my ideology bin laden just imagine the difference you could have made had you directed your leadership for the benefit of human development I wanted to bleed the enemies to the point of bankruptcy 
and this was a war of attrition. Every action was right in my view. Your irrelevant responses suggest that you have no answer to any of our questions. We shall forward your application to the president for his opinion. We shall let you know. Thank you. Your turn, Alexander. Welcome, Sol Alexander the Great. So good to see you here. You had renounced wars and stood for peace. Though you were the mighty emperor, you deserve the title Great more than anyone else, including me. The nobles are always so modest. No wonder you compliment me. You're the greatest military commander the world had ever seen. You conquered the world without a debacle. You will be the role model for military commanders eternally. I was destined to die at the age of 32. Maybe conquering the world was a compensation from the Almighty for shrinking my life. You had absolute control when it came to bodily pleasures. But why were you so addicted to wine, which perhaps took away your life at an early age? You score somewhere and lose elsewhere. That's the strange arithmetic of life. Unprecedented victories and unexpected death seem to have made a philosopher out of you. You seem to be influenced by the preachings of your tutor Aristotle, posthumously. We refuse to fall in terms with the realities of life, which perhaps makes even a hard fact an ultra-philosophy. How do you see the political, social and economic scenarios of the modern world? It is only the common man who pays the price, bears the brunt, always, then, now, and maybe even in the times to come, until and unless some extraordinary leader who triggers out a staggering miracle. Democracy is fine theoretically, but there is a glaring gap between its ideals and the realities on the ground. Karl Marx, prophet of the proletariat, proponent of the classless society, apostle of the great economy, was a legend who lived poor all through his life and died stateless too. Some of the rulers claimed to have inherited his ideology turned out to be dictators, purging the opponents, pushing the legacy of the dynasty to the fore. What is the use of this so-called liberty and democracy when the hands are dyed red with the blood of the innocent? The world still has a long way to go. Thank you, Commander. We'll get back to you. Good evening, fellow souls. And this is your President Sebastian once again. I am glad that the interview today turned out to be a spectacular event, and thank you for the overwhelming response. I am pleased to inform you that the Parliament of Souls has also decided to hold a conference in the near future to discuss human issues at length and to decide on the agenda for the proposed human mission. The list of candidates shortlisted through the interview today will be announced in the conference. Thank you, and see you all in the conference soon.